Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Al Emery, Managing Director at Momentum. Welcome to our virtual user group. Uh, I'm just going to back up one slide, if you can, Morgan. Uh, if you haven't already seen the slide and haven't already done so, we, we would ask you to mute your microphone. Um, it just helps us minimise, keep the audio to a high quality and minimise any background noise. You, you can unmute yourself anytime, and if you've got questions, uh, then you can either raise your hand or pop something in the chat or unmute. Um, Melanie has a question. Will this session be recorded? Uh, yes, it is. We're recording it now. <laughs> okay, next slide, Morgan. Uh, so the agenda for this afternoon, and, and thank you all for uh, jumping online. It's always interesting doing a, a virtual session with, uh, with a lot of attendees, but we, we think we've got a good agenda for you. Um, I, I will run through a, a, an update on Momentum, uh, briefly, uh, we have a special guest speaker uh, from MYB, uh, one of their senior management people, Frank uh, Feustel, who is the head of product for all their enterprise or ERP products. Uh, we're also going to be talking a lot about MYB Advanced and show you a few tips and tricks on how you can use it better. Uh, we have another guest, Chris Miller uh, from Belixo. Uh, Valixo is an Excel, Microsoft Excel based uh, business intelligence or reporting tool uh, written from the ground up to integrate with MYB Advanced. Uh, so he's going to talk to you about how that can help you with your reporting. We'll introduce you to all of our MYB Advanced consulting team, talk about what happens at the end of financial year, uh, talk about the major upgrade, uh, which is uh, coming in the next quarter and also an exciting new, uh, completely new module called MYB Workforce Management. Um, opportunities for questions throughout, so we hope you enjoy the, the session this afternoon. Next slide please, Morgan. And again. Uh, so I won't dwell on this too long, we just wanted to give you a quick update on Momentum's business. Uh, obviously your customers are ours and you may not know that much about our business, but we uh, have uh, weathered COVID like all of you uh, and weathered it pretty well. Very few of our clients were severely impacted either. And in fact, most of our clients have grown as have momentum. We've grown 12% year on year during that period. Uh, and we employed 10 new people over that period. Uh, in addition to that, we, we work very hard on pr providing the best service hmm. we can. So we have a key focus on customer experience, so the, the experience our clients have when they're dealing with us, right from the uh, early engagement from a sales perspective through the implementation, and then importantly thereafter as you're getting up and running and improving how you use MYB Advanced. Um, that includes upgrades, uh, catch-ups with our uh, senior consultants or account managers. Uh, we celebrate customer anniversaries. Um, and we do, we work very hard on our internal professional development, knowledge sharing uh, through our SharePoint knowledge base. Uh, we opened a Brisbane office. Uh, that was actually about two years ago, but in the last 12 months especially, we've built a, and a consulting team uh, based in our Castle Dean office, who um, are all NYB advanced consultants. We celebrated our 11th year of trading and we also moved our entire business to cloud applications, including moving our company from using uh, MYB XO to MYB Advanced. So we, we use what we sell. Next uh, 12 months, uh, we obviously want to largely continue that journey by continuing to improve uh, what we offer. That's partly product and partly service. Uh, there's a huge amount of improvements coming to your MYB event software um, and Frank from MYB will talk about some of those shortly. Uh, we also regularly provide extensions or enhancements of what MYB Advanced does uh, by either momentum add-ons uh, or custom solutions that we develop for clients. 
and one of the real strengths of MYB Advanced is the, the platform has a development layer within it. So developers, um, momentum developers, external developers, even some of our clients have developers, can make changes to the way MYB Advanced works, write new screens, change screens, or even write whole modules as a part of the solution, and they look exactly like the rest of, uh, they look and behave exactly like the rest of Advanced. Um, and then outside of that, there is a world or an ecosystem of add-ons certified by MYB, uh, accessible via the MYB app marketplace that you may not be aware of, and we'll, we'll uh, show you a little bit about that as well. Um, so continually working to improve what we do for you uh, and concurrently been working on a, a self-paced learning management solution where, where customers can do more self-paced training or learning the basics of how to use MYB Advanced um, at their own pace. Uh, this slide is just showing you uh, we really love to celebrate uh, customer longevity. In fact, customers for life is one of the key pillars of, of what Momentum is all about. It's one of our four key values. Uh, and we really try to go out of our way, especially for five and ten year anniversaries, to, um, to really thank our customers for sticking with us and sticking with uh, the software they're using. Um, and uh, there's a few examples. Uh, so coming up now, we're really pleased to have um, MYB uh, present uh, as a guest speaker for us today. Uh, so we have Frank uh, Feustel, Head of Product uh, Enterprise at MYB, and he's going to share some um, information with you about MYB and MYB Advanced. So I'll hand over to you now, Frank. Welcome to Momentum's user group. Well, thank you very much, Al. Uh, thanks for having me at the Momentum User Group. Um, before we dive into the topics uh, I've prepared for today, so first and foremost, I really wanted to uh, thank you all for being at the session, um, for coming here today, and most importantly, for trusting your business with Momentum and also with MYOB. So and this is something we don't take for granted. Uh, uh, so this is really important to us. So we have customers that have been with our partner and uh, and us for literally decades. And those, as we have just seen on the, on the previous slide, and those who are new to the MYOB community as well. So we're both incredibly proud and grateful to have you here with us today. So again, many thanks and uh, let's just get into it. So on the next slide, um, I don't want to spend too much time if we can we just move to the next slide, please? OK, I don't want to spend too much time on giving you an overview of MYOB, but I thought I'd touch on at least a few things. So uh, as you probably know, uh, MYOB has been around for over 30 years now, uh, but there is probably some details you really don't know or you may not be knowing about um, MYOB. So the reason for, for us being is uh, all about you, all about our customers. So our role is really about helping you starting, survive and succeed with your businesses. So we do not exceed for any other reason. And simply, if you're not succeeding, we uh, either are we. So and that's why 100 percent focused really on on this, on the business and on our customers. So we do have a team of about 2,000 people in eight offices across Australia and New Zealand currently, uh, and we've fully focused on um, only on the ANZ market. So we, we pride ourselves with being ANZ specialists and not international generalists as some other vendors. So anyone that has to negotiate compliance, tax, payroll and financial services uh, and other areas, so all workflows that we support at MYOB, uh, you will be knowing what an ANZ expert is and why it is needed. So, and finally, as I said at the start, MIOB is only successful if ANZ businesses are successful and competitive. So, we spend a lot of our time uh, in investment to advocating for businesses and what matters most to businesses. So, and this is from uh, a lot of through a lot of topics from digital um, enablement and adoption uh, to accessing finance and uh, the future of work and well-being, uh, in particular as it relates to budget and policy changes, 
and um, we do have, as you as you may or may not know, also very strong uh, connections to the state and federal uh, policy development. So uh, we are really playing out our political muscle then on behalf of our customers uh, in both in, in in the small area or SME area as well as in the mid market business area. So if you move to the next slide, um, so. That was a little bit about MOB in general. So if you if you're looking at the enterprise division, which is responsible for uh, for advanced um, and uh, well, I'm responsible for product. Uh, so uh, how does it look? So we currently have about um, 11,000 enterprise customers uh, with all the four customers using our ERP products to power their respective businesses in a in a and Z. In terms of industry, so our customers uh, uh, span a, a range from manufacturing, construction, retail, wholesale, distribution, professional services, general business all over the place. Uh, but there is a strong focus on manufacturing, construction, retail and wholesale. Just on the ERP side of the business, this means we manage around $11 billion in transactional revenue uh, generated from your businesses each and every month. Uh, furthermore, we have uh, we have about 65,000 people using our ERP products every day of the week, uh, and a huge 1.3 million employees are actually paid through our MIOB ERP software. So, in essence, whilst the MIOB brand is is predominantly known for servicing smaller businesses, we have a considerable enterprise business with Advanced being the cornerstone of that business. And that business is growing at more than 35% year on year. So let's get on to the next slide. Um, let's dive a little bit further into advanced um, and into the advanced advanced 2021 release one. It's moving on to the next slide, please. So let's start out with basic uh, product strategy on one page. So what we what we're really busy with uh, from a product perspective is we're building out a smart cloud native platform to help your and other ANZ businesses succeed and scale. So that's our predominant goal from a strategy perspective. So we continue to build more capabilities around key industries, as I mentioned, as we have done with the manufacturing edition and the construction edition that have been released recently. And we are uniquely different as the first vendor in ANZ to bring together business critical functions across ERP, payroll, and as we will learn more later, workforce management on a single platform that intelligently connects workflows within our customer businesses and to the broader ecosystem. So we currently bring to market two major advanced platform releases each year to roll out new capabilities to our customers. And um, the advanced 2021 release one is just getting out of the door now. So let's have a little bit of a closer look on what's in that release on the next slide so there is a number of enhancements of course it's a every every single release has a a, a long list of, of particular enhancements so some of those are highlighted on the right um, but let's talk about what we're looking into in terms of themes uh, those enhancements are created around so when we're first planning a release so we start with feedback from our from the MIOB advanced community and then this funnels into uh, the specific key pillars that make up a specific release. So this release is about usability, best in class functionality and industry solutions. So what that means is really usability is about making it easier for you to use the platform through things like enhanced workflows, uh, better inventory reporting and a redesign in the CRM data deduplication feature, for instance, in this particular release. So usability is a key feature of a solution from a product perspective, uh, and we focus on delivering those features that help to create efficiency. So the second uh, uh, topic or theme is best in class functionality, uh, which is um, which have things from SMS messaging and push, push notifications to the centralization of vendor management and predefined dashboards we have, uh, for instance, in the financial module. So our focus here is to deliver functionality that exceeds uh, you, our customers' expectations, and supports your operational needs as your business grow and adapts to changing environments. 
So in the last pillar, uh, as we as we mentioned before, as I mentioned before, is around industry solutions. So those are specific sets of capabilities around um, a specific industry uh, to support customers in those areas across uh, in the latest two releases around uh, manufacturing and construction. Uh, but we do have planned to release further additions uh, further out uh, through the year. Now, uh, this is just a highlight. So um, session is recorded. You will see the slides. You can get through the details. So let's go to the next slide. So I'm really pleased and excited to introduce you to the new workforce management platform, uh, which is just a recent addition to our product portfolio. So this was um, uh, we brought that out based on uh, feedback we received from uh, our customers across our customer base uh, that were look, looking for new ways and better ways of um, handling their work pro, their workforce. So we added uh, workforce management workforce management capabilities uh, to our advanced uh, platform in response to that. So if you go to the next slide. So what what is workforce management about? So it is really in one platform managing people. Because it's not as simple as it used to be. So with multiple teams out there, remote, uh, in office workers, um, and also a huge, huge range of different processes, it can be very difficult to make sure everyone is coordinated on track and working, working efficiently. So administra administrative tasks like creating rosters, uh, tracking attendance, managing leave applications, and hiring new people can become very complex as the business grows. So if you get your people management wrong, it could have widespread ramifications for your business, as you all know. From lost time on complex manual processes to a lack of insight into how your people are working or how much your labor is costing you. So getting this right means ensuring your business is working efficiently, um, meeting compliance requirements and primed for profitable growth. And that's where MYOB workforce management can help. It's designed to create a seamless workflow across HR, operations, and payroll. On the next slide. So you will hear, as we've seen from the agenda, more about workforce management later through uh, the session. So let's just have a quick look on uh, what comes next. Um, if we move to the next slide, please. So I put together a couple of the key areas we're working on, um, which all build up, as I mentioned, on the advanced cloud native platform uh, we are creating for uh, for the mid-market business. So on the advanced business side, there is, of course, after release one comes release two, so which will have a ton of new capabilities. Uh, a couple of things I want to highlight is around uh, payment timeline reporting um, and also the integration of document recognition. So what we are starting to do with that um, uh, subsequent release towards the end of the year is actually then bringing more um, machine learning and artificial intelligence um, elements into the product uh, with the sole goal to actually make your life easier, um, uh, help with the digitization and also reduce the manual steps um, um, and the media breaks which are still um, which, which are still available or which are still um, sometimes in the process flows. So the other thing, as I mentioned, is uh, in terms of industry support, uh, we are currently uh, crafting a retail and commerce edition. So if you are in that particular business area, so that's good news for you. So the, uh, uh, please, please stay tuned. Uh, there is more to come. So, so we're really excited about that particular um, uh, edition we are crafting. So that's only a couple of highlights on the advanced business side. If you look into the advanced people side, so our payroll um, engine on the advanced platform, uh, so we're currently going through a, a, a a usability review and usability improvements, um, which is really great. So that's also with a goal to leverage all of the platform capabilities that are in the advanced platform uh, and streamline business operations. Uh, other enhancements are around managing employee payroll costs. And then there's, of course, a longer list of uh, compliance requirements like the ex extension of the New Zealand Holidays uh, Act, um, AU tax compliance and single touch payroll to requirements. 
And then on the advanced workforce management, so we're not stopping there, of course, with uh, just having uh, just getting the first release out of the door. Um, and you probably don't know even what is in there yet, but um, there's more to come uh, in terms of onboarding capabilities, maintaining employee details uh, across both workforce management and payroll on that one platform. Uh, we're adding project and job codes to manage uh, shift bidding and other capabilities. And then there's another excitement enhancement, which will come later through the year, which is the recruitment module. So this gives just a very brief overview on uh, some of the highlights, uh, what will, uh, in, in terms of what will come next um, after the uh, R1 release. So uh, with this, just moving to the next slide, please. Uh, just want to wrap up my uh, session. Uh, so, in summary, MIOB, we consider ourselves as the advocate for your business. Uh, Advance provides the platform for your business to thrive. And MIOB, we will be with in an MIOB, we will keep providing value to our customers through continuous enhancements uh, to address local market requirements in the platform and for our customers. So, with this, I want to wrap up and um, thank you for your time. Uh, happy to address any questions you may have. Thank you, Frank. Uh, that was a great overview of what's happening in MYB, in particular with MYB Advanced. So, yeah, we will pause there just for a second or two. And if anybody does have any questions while you've got the tiger by the tail, uh, feel free to raise your hand or pop them in the chat. Okay, thanks everybody and thank you very much for joining us, Frank. Uh, no problem at all. Thanks for having me and um, enjoy the rest of your session. Thank you guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Before we jump into our next segment with uh, Nicola showing you some tips and tricks, the, the uh, we'll talk about it a little more in the session on the upgrades, but the uh, the number of new features and enhancements going into MYB Advanced is uh, at times amazing. And not all customers necessarily see that. So I will show you a couple of websites. You can see where all of the release notes are documented as well as knowledge base articles and white papers. Uh, so that, you know, outside of this session, um, if you want to uh, review those new features, uh, it's always good to understand what the software can do for you that it may not be right now. Um, so we'll touch on that. The next up we have uh, advanced tips and tricks. Uh, so we want to show you some uh, use uh, ways that you can use MYB advanced and things you can do uh, largely yourself uh, to uh, really be more efficient uh, use MYB Advanced in an easy way and, and get good information. So I'm going to hand over now to Nicola Butler. Uh, Nicola's uh, one of our advanced gurus on our advanced consulting team. Thanks, Nicola. Hi, can't wait the speakers. <laughs> uh, so hello, everybody. I don't know who's online, um, but I've just got a few tips and tricks to share with you. So I'm just going to share my screen. And hopefully everybody can see that. Oops, wrong one. Sorry. Just got back. There we go. That's it. Thank you. I'm just going to turn my video off for a minute. As you can see, we've got a few tips and tricks that we use quite a lot. And I'm just going to go over a few of the basics. Um, the first one is actually using this search bar, which we feel is underused a lot. So I just wanted to show you a couple of examples of a way of finding something. So somebody's called up and you don't know who they are. So you've got um, perhaps you've got a pizza shop that's called you. And you can go look if you look under transactions and profiles, it comes up with all the different areas where the word pizza comes up. So if you have an opportunity and you want to be able to go find people can then drop into those transactions and actually have a look or if it's an invoice. Um, another one is, for example, a location. So if somebody gives you um, an invoice number or a transaction number and you don't know where to find it, then you can just enter the transaction number up here and it'll come up here and you can see here you've got click on it. I've got a fixed asset transaction, which I don't think we're probably looking for, but another one.
we've got a payment there. Um, any other transactions names will come up. So if you want to put or a street, so often if you find something or you know where to go and you want to put a street in, that didn't work. Again, you can find the information. So there's lots of ways of finding different information through that. So I think you probably get the idea with that. So that's just a simple, simple area that we don't use a lot that we believe is quite handy, particularly when you get those emails through or telephone calls through from random people that you're not quite sure of how to find. It's a quick and easy way instead of going through all different ways, the uh, accounts, customers, suppliers, opportunities. Another one of uh, looking at is actually using the multi-tab. So we were aware that if you do a left hand, you can duplicate your screen. This gives you the opportunity to then slip between several screens. The only thing is if you do change one in one is then you just need to click on the refresh button up here and that will refresh whatever you've changed in another field. One of the favourite ones of using is also in sales orders or in any screen that you have. So we call these PL screens. So wherever you see that little ID that says PL, you usually have this filter settings. So this filter settings can be found in lots and lots of different places. So if you can do any kind of generic inquiries, if you're doing any automation schedules, you'll see these little filter buttons. When you click on this, you can see a filter being set in here. So this is a filter here is for open orders. So we're able to put in the status completed does not equal completed and the status does not equal cancelled. But apart from using these ones that you've got here where it says orders by month and you've got a pivot table in here and you've got my sales orders. So here is the sales order that I raised earlier today. If you've got a customer who is, for example, we've got Euro hair fashion quite easy that you can actually just make one for yourself. So if you're dealing with a particular client or a customer and you just quickly want to be able to see what invoices they've got, it's very easy to click on. And we choose a property in here. So you've got a whole array of properties. So even if you're doing a search, if you're trying to just find things and just find information, there's lots of ways. It doesn't have to be something that's static. It can be used something that you maybe only use once. If I want to find a customer name and it's going to be, I'm going to say contained because I'm going to put Euro in. It comes up with Euro hair fashion. And I can just apply that. It gives me all of these transactions. And of course, I can export them out or I can go and have a look. So it's reduced the amount of transactions that I've got to look. And say on any, any transactions. So if we're going to purchases, click on your suppliers. You've got that little filter there. Inventory. Ah. Anywhere you go that you find that little filter, you can do that. If, for example, you wanted to do that by I don't know how many item classes we've got in. So if we do a filter settings, for example, we're going to create a new one. So we'll create a new filter setting. And I want to find in the description anything with the name that came to us. Yeah. I don't, oh, your screen was lagging. It's okay. It's all good. Okay. Thanks. So if it contains fan, didn't want that. It'll work for me, is it? We'll bring up the fan details. Now, if I wanted to save that, I can just save that and call, call it fan and click on OK. OK, that's not going to work either. Here again. If I apply it, it's only going to apply to me. If I want to actually then save that and apply it to somebody else and give it to another a member of the team, I can actually then share it here and it means everybody within the, the company can actually see that screen. Another quick way of if you're looking through, for example, a customer. And 
and you're trying to find something within a customer or you want to change something within a customer, when you've got all these different tabs, you can be going in and out, in and out, in and out, which can be quite time consuming. So say, for example, if I just wanted to go and have a look and see uh, payment methods. So if I clicked on payment methods, if I use these buttons here, they will take me through the customer. So you can see the customer are changing, but I'm not having to go in and out of each screen. Again, any screen that you see these buttons on with the tabs, you can go in between any of those screens and tab through them. So I find this really useful when I'm trying to cha maybe change something and I want to maybe change it. I don't want to change too much before it's clicking on ship via and I wanted it to be local and I was going through and I could copy and I'd be going through and saving, which is my favourite trick not to save. And then moving on and then maybe, oh, this one needs to be local and just adding them in. It's a good way of being able to do things in any of the PL fields, so these, these screen IDs. Another field that we can do is if you want to do pivot tables. So this is getting a bit a bit little bit fancy. But within the customization, where you've got these customer screens, and I'm going to stay in this screen. Okay, I'm not, I'm going to move to invoices and memos. So within this, we've got the filter there, but this is the way we've got the customization in the top right hand corner. And if you click on pivot tables, this is something that you can make. And again, you can save it if you want to, or it's something that you can do ad hoc. And it's very much like Excel. So basically, you're going to pick your pivot rows, your columns, and the value that you want to actually look at. So as long as that information is in that in the in the previous screen, you can pick that. When you click on these, you can then change the properties within those. So for example, if we just save that, maybe to call it, I'm just going to call it um and I go and have a look at the pivot. You can see the dates are pretty much, that's really not giving them much information. So I click back into the pivot table and change this date value, sorry, in the right field. And find the right one. Okay, where's it gone? I think you want date part. Thank you. Second from the bottom. <laughs> the last one I try. If I click in month and save, and then we go. Look. You can see now we can see the invoices by month without having to do any reports or anything like that. Again, like with everything, you can send it out into Excel because we've got the little Excel button there. You wanted to save that, and if you wanted to save that that pivot, you can actually click this. So make visible on the UI will then give you the option to actually put it somewhere. So if this is a pivot table that you really like and you want to keep using it, then you can do that, and that's going to go under my data views. But if I wanted to put it on a different place, then I can select the place that I want to put it on, and the categories again. I can change the categories into wherever the, the categories is going. If I wanted to put on profiles, reports. I put it wherever I want. If I save that and then go into my data views, you can see on the pivot tables, there's that pivot table. If I go into the receivables, And find it within there. Just going back into the actual screen itself. One of the most common things that we find is people don't like the terminology. And obviously having a new system, being able to read the screens and find your way around. 
there's these three little buttons here that can help you with that. So I'm going to click on purchases. When I click onto this, the three little dots in the left hand and click on edit menu, it changes the setting. It means I actually can't go. If I click on any of these, I can't actually go any further. It's only looking at those. So if I want to change this screen, I can change this screen. If I need to change another screen, I have to exit, click on where I want to go, and click on the three screens there, and edit menu. This gives you the ability to actually move and, and customize the screen to however you want it to be. The changes are global. So if, for example, um, I wanted to put, instead of calling transactions, I wanted to call it cash transactions. Type cash in the front of it or rename it to whatever I want it to be and click it on OK. Now changes to the cash transaction. If I didn't want to have these profiles, if I didn't want these names here, I click in menu settings. This brings up workspace categories. If you just look at this, can you see how we've got a list of transactions and it's not alphabetical and probably you're looking at it thinking it doesn't make any sense at all. What it means is that if this transaction is here, is this transaction is here? Whoops. If I move down, profiles there is the profiles here. If I wanted to add in, this is the order of the actual work category spaces that are applicable across the board to any screen. So if, for example, I wanted to put profiles, but I wanted it to bank feeds to be before profiles, I pick bank feeds up and I just move it up. Just be aware if I did that, if on any of the other screens we had bank feeds, but obviously we're not going to have bank feeds in banking, they would actually move. If I then save that and exit, whoops, you can see the bank feeds is now above the profiles. The other thing that you can do is if there's something there that you want to change. So if, for example, you want to put monthly reports in and you want to add, then you can add a workspace here. So if I add workspace, a oh, long one. I want to add a category, so I want to add in monthly reports. So I want to be able to put my monthly reports into one little file so I can go find them and I click on OK. Monthly reports will be, I can't move it down, and I've lost it. Can anybody see monthly reports for me? It won't matter anyway. So what I can do is if I go to a monthly report that I'm going to do, so if the reconciliation history and I edit that one, when I drop down here, I should be able to find monthly reports, which are there now. So if I add in monthly reports there, the category monthly reports and click on OK. Now you can see I have a new tab called monthly reports. Whatever I want to put in there, I can go put this reconciliation statement in. Let's find my monthly reports again. And click on OK. And it brings that in. So that's something easy. Instead of having to go all through those reports and find out what monthly reports you've got, it just brings them all together, just making it easier to find, particularly at that month end. The other thing within this space is that you can use tiles. So this is really useful if you've got somebody who's really not comfortable with a system. So front of house, cash sales, somebody who's really just wants to be able to click on a button and go where they want to go to. Within here, you can actually create a new tile menu. So for this, I'm going to exit in here and I'm going to go to receivables. It doesn't matter where you are because you can decide where you're going to put this tile in, but this I particularly want to put it in this area. So we're back into the edit menu. Got edit menu. We're going to add a new tile. 
these these are these new invoice new payment customer details and new customers so if i click on any icon that's all it is is the little icon in the branch and i wanted to call this uh, cash sale from the cash sale i'm going to then pick the actual invoice screen which in this instance i'm going to call so three five Invoices. I can click on that, exit the menu. What that does, now we're back in the live system. If I click on that, yeah. it brings it back to the cash sale. <clears throat> As you can see, there's no details here. So this is just another tile that you've got in, in, on any of these. But what you can do is you can actually make this information so that it actually comes through to the cash sale or if you want a supplier or a customer or any screen. So if we go back into edit menu, we're going to click on the tile here. What I add in here is that I'm going to add in the actual cash sale account. So if I go on here, I'm going to pick up a receivables. I'm going to find the cash sale. So when I've got a cash sale, I need to have a reference number of new, a customer of cash sale, and a terms of cash only. So if I've got this and I've put this onto another screen, which I've done earlier, and then in here, we're going to add the parameters. So this is something here, but you've got this example that you can follow. So for every parameter that you add, we're going to add the ampersand. Once you've done one or two of these, it's actually easier than you think, and you can do step by step. I'm going to add an ampersand document. So I'm saying the document equals, I hope this works. This and the reference number equal new. Oh, so that could be any customer that you need. You can see how that comes in there and I click on OK. When I exit, fingers crossed this works first time. Be amazing if it does, but let's hope so. Yay, it worked. So what this does is it takes me directly into the type cash cell. So whoever is using that can then just go straight in and actually put the details in. That can be good. They can do that on set any of the screens. So it can be on sales orders, it can be on inventory, it can be a supplier, anything that you can think that speeds up that process, particularly that front front to step staff, uh, warehouse staff. It's good to be able to go through to bring in receipts or any other reasons like that, any other examples like that. Al, I think that's about me done. Great, thanks, Nicola. Uh, and we did have a question from Karina, uh, and it was about I missed it when it was first posted about whether uh, something was changed globally or the user only. I'm assuming that was in relation to changing the menu. Um, so, can you answer that, uh, Nicola? When you're changing menus, does that change them globally or just for you? If you're changing filters, that can be for you unless you put it to be shared. If you're changing these within this screen here on the edit menu, it is global. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, menu change was the question. Yeah, so menu changes are global. global. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Um, great. So, yeah, that, that covered quite a bit. And uh, time permitting, we might add a few more on the end, uh, particularly with some extra things around pivot tables and generic inquiries, uh, because they all just put power in your hands um, to be able to tailor the system for how you want to see things and how you want to access your, your data. Next slide. Thanks, Morgan. Okay, so next uh, we have – that's a great photo, Chris. I don't know uh, where you found that. I'm not sure either. Uh, so we're, we're introducing Chris Miller. Chris is with uh, Velixo, and uh, Chris will talk to you about uh, how Velixo can make your reporting life uh, easy, and I won't steal any of your thunder by saying any more than that. So uh, thanks for joining us, Chris. You know uh, – MYV Advanced User Group, and I'll hand over to you. Thanks. Thanks very much, uh, Morgan. Thanks. Next slide, please. Right, and firstly, Al, thanks very much, and thank you to your team at Momentum um, for the great support. We actually feel part of your business, and as you can see, I've got my Momentum shirt on. So to everybody, welcome. If you haven't seen Belixo, um, not a problem. I'm not going to show it to you now. I, don't, I only have 10 minutes. And it's just enough time for me to convince you to have a look. And if you haven't had a look, please do. Okay. So what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to outline what Velixo is. I'm going to give you some ideas about why you need it, what it'll do for you, and how it'll save you time and money and remove the risks from your business. Now, um, I'm not going to do it in any particular order, but while we're still on the slide and those things, you you're looking at them, let me tell you what it is. It's an Excel-based tool that is fully integrated all the way through with MyAB Advanced. Um, and it has the phenomenal power to, to just automate your reporting and analysis. We've been at this about 15 years, and it is the most elegant solution that I have seen. And we've had absolutely phenomenal support from the business partners, particularly from Momentum, and also from MyAB themselves. Um, it's just been fantastic. So um, very simply, it's an Excel-based tool um, that makes your life uh, you know, easy and simple. Okay, next slide, please. And you can click through all of them, Morgan, that's fine. Okay, right. People will tell you that it's uh, you shouldn't be doing your reporting manually in Excel. And I, my comment to that is, well, there's a difference between manual Excel and integrated Excel products. So manual products where you're cutting and pasting, doing things manually, things don't link up, you're linking spreadsheets, and they're just fraught with all sorts of risks, okay? Integrated Excel tools um, give you your, your information uh, efficiently, simply, um, and have the, let's call it the robust environment around them to be able to give you phenomenal power delivered at a very cheap price simply because you already own the Excel. The one key thing with um, Velixo is it's fully integrated with MyAB Advanced. And the most important part of that is the security from Advanced comes through into Velixo. So if you cannot see information or an employee cannot see information in um, Advanced and they use their uh, log on in a spreadsheet, they will not be able to see it or receive it within the spreadsheet. Okay. Key is you have access to all the data within your MyAB Advanced. So manual manual work, you don't have access to data. With this, you've got access to every little piece of information. Basically, anything you can write a generic inquiry on, which is everything, you can um, pull that data into your Velixa reports great drill downs where you can drill right back through to the source document. Okay. Here's the one that um, really is very important. It's an Excel skill set. You can get up and running within an hour or two uh, from a skill set, particularly um, loading Velixo takes five minutes. Okay. Um, the, the important thing with the skill set is because it's Excel, it's not like a lot of other products where you need to learn coding, you need to learn a whole new set of languages and things. This is Excel. You've all got Excel skills. Yes, we're at different levels. It doesn't require a very high level of Excel at, at one level. You can literally pull the functions in and start uh, start reporting you know, within five minutes. 
Does it create efficiencies? Massive efficiencies within an organization. Um, you can look at manual reporting where people are taking, you know, half a day to to build uh, reports across their branches or their sub accounts. Literally, you build one report and change your filters, copy them, and then save them. Next month, you just open them, and all the information is there. So phenomenally powerful. There's, you know, the, just the power with Excel, with the power of how data is, particularly how data is stored within MIB Advanced, um, with its varying dimensions, uh, count classes, it's just phenomenal, okay? It also allows you to automate your reporting. So once you've got it there, um, you can get it distributed quite quickly to people. Um, you know, if you've got a report going to 20 different branch managers and you only want them to get their information, it's set as a template, you push the button and it's gone. They receive it and um, they've now got the ability um, to drill into the information if they have a Vilixa license. If they don't, they can receive it. It's just an Excel file. Um, but it's still, whilst it's not live data to them, it's still usable data. Okay. Uh, Morgan, another two clicks there, please. Okay. Um, it has a lot of um, general ledger and project functions. And the reason for this is that those are two key parts where people report. And all reporting is elements that are used time and time again. You've got your different layers uh, within MIB Advanced. So you've got your, your um, actual ledger, you've got your budget ledger, you've got stat ledgers, and your functions will, will look at your different ledgers, look at the different parts, and return the data. It can only tell you what's in your accounts. All right, and it will be right. If you set it up correctly, it will be right. There's no cutting and pasting. You can make your reports dynamic. Somebody adds a new GL account, bang, it automatically comes in uh, to your reporting. So that is a huge, huge time saver, okay? It also has inbuilt tools to make like life easier. So it's got a tool that allows you to write your budgets straight back into advance. You can do your journals. It's got project forecasting and, and other little tools, you know, putting your, your gel in is as easy as clicking a button. So very, very powerful from, from that perspective. So if you just think about what you've got there, how easy it is, every single company, people do manual reporting in Excel. And Excel is just used extensively. You might as well automate it in a robust environment. Okay, next slide, please. And you can click through four things. Thank you. Great. Right, so I'm just going to give you a quick idea on four things of how, how it can make a difference. Okay, let's talk about firstly the risks of doing manual reporting. Okay. Um, there's, there's always a problem when you're cutting and pasting. And you might have a fantastic model that's been built by somebody. Um, but the, the problem with that is that when you cut and paste, if you don't get it exactly in the right place, or if there's a new account code or something, everything goes haywire. And, and that's sort of a major issue. If you now want to make a change and somebody else has built the report, that's also a problem because you, it takes forever to unpack these things. Um, and I would say 20% of the consulting work we do um, is all about uh, people coming to us and saying, we've had this individual in our organization, built these fantastic reports, and now nobody can use them, and they're not there anymore. And that's what um, Velixa does. It gives you an environment that just about anybody can pick up and unpack it and um, give you the reporting and fix it if it's needed. But generally, for somebody to train up on, as I said, on Velixo is very quick. Okay, There's no reliance on an individual. Everybody's got Excel skills. Anybody can watch a few videos or have some training. Um, there's great skill set at, at Momentum. Um, and you're literally a Wayne Racing. It is not complex. Okay. Think about the cost of repetitive tasks in an organization. Quite often the reporting is being done at a CFO level, um, which is generally quite an expensive level in an organization. And those are done time and time and time again. And then there's an error and, you know, with your cut and paste or something, and you're just spending hours checking. I would rather have my staff spending all their time working on the business. I hate cliches, but working on the business, not in the business, and looking at you know, what, what is the impact of these numbers? Um, and for me, the final one, as you go up the line, as you go outwards in any organization, it's about real-time decision-making. 
I would like to have a report on my desk. I'm a sales guy that tells me exactly what's going on with my sales, not um, not having to uh, go and you know um, wait for somebody else to produce me a monthly report. Is this this is what your sales? Well, I'd rather have a report that's there. In fact, a very interesting comment uh, was decision or decision comment around that was I saw a sales report and they couldn't get the guys to spend time analyzing the report. So they put their commission calculation on a second sheet. Suddenly the reports were, were viewed two or three times a day. Amazing. So just four things there. All I'm all I'm saying to you is there's a tool here that can automate your reporting. Uh, we have no doubt that people are spending a lot of time doing things manually. Um, the take up of Alexa across the MRB advanced space has been absolutely phenomenal. We've been blown away by it. Uh, next slide, please, Morgan. OK, so a trial, the no cost for you to have a trial. We just load a form and get it for, uh, get you a license, which you never install. It's provisioned on your URL and um, and then we'll sit down, have a discussion with you about your reporting analysis, give you some initial training, or um, uh, the guys from Momentum might do it. Please, we're just an extension of Momentum. We work very closely with them on everything. Um, and, and that's quick and easy. That costs you nothing. The best place to see any reporting is do it on your data. Have a look at it against what you're doing currently and what you don't have more particularly. A lot of reporting is not done because it's just too difficult. Well, it's actually not too difficult. Okay, there's my details there. Please write them down. Give me a ring, email me. I will always keep um, uh, Lydia and Brian in, in the loop. You can go right to them. Um, they can arrange a demo. They can arrange a license for you. Not a, not a problem. They're well known to, to everybody in, who is in the industry from uh, at, uh, at Momentum. But um, yeah, so please have a go at a trial. Um, read the websites there, velixo.com. Um, you know, there's a huge amount of information out there and it is not an expensive tool. I'll put that out right there. It's literally 10 to 15% of what of your more fancy tools cost um, on an annual basis, um, you know, depending the number of licenses and things. So yeah, from my side, thank you for your time. Elle, thank you for your support and having us here. And um, yeah, any questions, I'm happy to field them. Pleasure. Thanks, Chris. And I'll just um, perhaps wrap that up a little by saying we meet people in business uh, all the time, new customers and existing customers who are Preparing that their management pack for, for month end is a great big Excel spreadsheet with a whole bunch of tabs in it. Uh, and when we asked them how they updated each month, the answer is commonly, you know, I run a report A, B, C, D, E, and F, and I could keep going, export each one of them into Excel, uh, manipulate that, copy and paste it into my management pack, and then start to actually uh, deal with it. So, what Delixo does is remove the middleman. You don't need to run a report and export it to Excel because Excel is already connected in the way that you need it, um, which, as Chris has summarised very well, removes all the risk of accidentally transposing something wrong, uh, takes that away all the time because you just simply click refresh and just gives you your, your straight into your analysis and decision making as opposed to spending half of your time on transposition. Um, we will touch on uh, outside of uh, Velixo, uh, there is a uh, quite a large ecosystem of add-ons that, that work with MYB Advance in a whole range of applications. And MYB have a website called their MYB App Marketplace. And if you haven't had a look at it, it's worth having a look at. I'm just going to quickly share my screen with you. So myb.com forward slash au forward slash apps. Now in that screen, you can browse apps by product and just pick MYB Advanced and it will show you all of the industry solutions, add-ons, uh, accounts payable, automation, um, 
e-commerce integrations, uh, you name it, there's quite a, a large list. And NYB Advanced does many, many things, but, but no ERP does everything. So where, and you'll see the Lixo there, which uh, Chris has just presented to you. Um, so if you have a need that MYB is, MYB Advanced is not quite fulfilling, there's a good chance that there's an ad, a, a, an app that's integrated and all of these apps are accredited by MYB. Uh, so that's a, a shopping cart for you uh, to look at uh, things that integrate with advanced. I'll just stop sharing and uh, Morgan, if you could reshare. Uh, so we're pretty much bang on uh, target time. Uh, so thank you, Chris. Uh, we're going to take a break for 10 minutes just so that everybody can stretch their legs and grab a cup of tea or coffee. And we'll see you back in 10 minutes. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the user group so far. Uh, the next bit, we're going to uh, introduce uh, our MYB Advanced team, or, or as, as many of them uh, who are available this afternoon, uh, talk about uh, end of financial year and what you need to do to prepare for that. Uh, talk in a bit more detail about the advanced upgrades, uh, a bit more detail about the workforce management solution that Frank managed, uh, me mentioned, and also talk about uh, have the opportunity for question and answers. And I do have a question from one of the uh, customers on the chat that, that I'll answer um, or show an example. It's a good question. Uh, so we'll jump back to that and show an example of what's called a side panel in a generic inquiry. Uh, firstly, though, uh, most importantly, I want to introduce you to our MYB Advanced Consulting Team. Um, and whichever of you uh, folks are, are on the chat, uh, turn your video on. I know that uh, Cindy is uh, currently out visiting a customer and Cindy is our one of our construction specialists. Uh, we have uh, Christian uh, and Christian is uh, based in Indonesia uh, currently and he is our manufacturing uh, expert. Um, but I can see already on the chat, we have uh, Joe uh, Hendrickson and Tarek in our uh, Brisbane office. And is it just the two of you there? Thumbs up if it is. <laughs> uh, we've also got Glenda Jones, uh, Kathy Davis, uh, Mac Coston, uh, Nicholas Wood. Uh, I can see Brian there on, on the chat. And uh, we have uh, obviously quite a large MYB advanced consulting team, uh, including a technical team of uh, developers and, and report writers in integrator, integrators. So, yeah, we just wanted you to have the opportunity to put a face to a name. Um, I'll, I'll just pause there because if you do have any questions about how do I do something in MYB advanced, well, you've got all the experts on, on the chat right now. So, so feel free. Uh, while we're waiting, I'm just going to quickly share my screen. Uh, we've got a question in the chat from uh, Jason, and he, he wants to know, is it possible to view a purchase order history uh, from a sales order uh, after it has been marked complete? And whilst I'm not going to show that specific example, it sounds like an example of something that can be done via a side panel. Now, uh, so in my demo environment, I'm showing a screen called Work Center Dispatch, which is part of the manufacturing module. And like uh, just about every other screen, it is a generic inquiry, uh, which can be modified. And one of the things about a generic inquiry over the last uh, little bit is the ability to add what's called a side panel. So you can link uh, information that's shown in the source generic inquiry to related information in the system. Um, so this enables, in this case, we have three side panels. So a, uh, an operation on a production order can link to the source production order in the production order detail screen, where you can drill right down to any part of that screen. Um, or in this case, 
a printed production ticket with barcodes on it. Uh, and the production order maintenance screen, which shows me the header information of that production order, including dates. Um, so that's all done uh, through the generic inquiry. And without going into a full training session of how to do generic inquiries, because I can assure you everybody in our team knows more about them than I do, uh, you have tables and relations and things, but the area that uh, I'm talking about is in the navigation tab where you can choose which screens you want to link to your existing screen and you then choose how they're linked. Uh, are they a side panel? Are they a pop-up? Are they a new tab or the same tab? So side panel is what we had uh, in those screens that I showed you. So I would think something like that could be achieved for um, looking at a purchase order if that purchase order was linked to a sales order. If any of my team want to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's achievable. <laughs> All right, uh, if you just want to reshare, Morgan. Um, got another question in the chat, so I'll throw this open to the team actually while you're still on. So the question is, uh, is it possible to email supplier invoices to the system for partial processing using OCR? Now, my answer to that is uh, yes. Uh, right now, today, it's not a core module, but there's various add-ons that do what we call accounts payable uh, automation, which will OCR your supplier's invoice. Uh, if you wanted to, it will then match it to a purchase order and or receipt in the system and then insert it as an accounts payable invoice. Um, so there's several integrated accounts payable automation solutions on the app marketplace. And I've added the URL for the app marketplace into the chat. Uh, the second part to my answer is that will be a standard feature of MYOB Advanced uh, later this year. And that's something that Frank did mention um, in his uh, presentation at, at the start. So depending on your time frame, you could have it now via an, an, an app that integrates, or you could have it in a few months' time as a core module. Uh, so every financial year comes to an end. Uh, for most of us, it's 30 June. And uh, we just want to make sure that uh, people are aware of that, uh, what they need to do or not do. Um, and, you know, do you need to do an upgrade? Uh, and thankfully, the answer to almost all of it is there's not a great deal you do need to do, uh, specifically at year-end. Um, there's no specific year-end role or close that you must do, like some other systems require. Uh, you just need to make sure that your new financial periods, e.g. July 21, uh, are open so that you can process in the new month. Um, and in many cases, they're already uh, they, they will almost certainly already exist and already be open. You can close uh, periods at any time. It's your choice, and you can do your year-end reconciliations at any time. So there's nothing in the system that's going to um, uh, force you to do a roll or an end of financial year step. Um, having said that, we do run an end of financial year training webinar, uh, and this year we're running it on the Looks like the 18th of June. Uh, so if you haven't already received invitations to that, uh, you will. Uh, the payroll side of things, um, tax scales in MYB Advanced are, are actually a cloud service that MYB maintain themselves. So there's nothing to do in your software. The tax scales will update automatically and will apply to a pay that relates to the new tax year and the existing tax scales will continue to apply to the current tax year. Um, any other compliance changes, such as superannuation, minimum thresholds, and things like that, uh, we think are automatically applied, but there'll be some clarifying information provided uh, via our EDMs, as well as in our webinar. Um, uh, the only thing for payroll is to send your STP 
finalisation. So in simple terms, not a great deal that you need to be concerned with. And if you do have any specific questions, feel free to reach out to our support team. Um, next, we're just going to touch on MYB advanced major upgrades, and I'll hand over to Deanne Black, our practice manager, to talk to you about that. Thanks, Al. So I, I um, practice manager, I'll be liaising between you, the customers, and the consultants to make sure that um, those of you with customizations, integrations, and add-ons are fully prepared. So we'll be um, sending out comms with, in relation to that, um, and if required, we'll be sending out estimates so that we can help you get ready for the upgrade. The upgrades are starting in July and rolling out um, through various different deployment windows until I think late October. That's pretty much it. Uh, I'll just add to that uh, a couple of things. Um, you're, you're probably all already aware. So MYB Advanced has minor upgrades and it has major upgrades. Minor upgrades, uh, they can be anywhere from six to eight a year, and the general approach is uh, MYB do it, it's done overnight, they're non-disruptive, there's usually little, if anything, for you to do, um, and they mostly provide minor new features as well as fixes. The, the major upgrade is where all the good stuff happens, and that's where uh, significant improvements, new features, new modules happen. And um, there's a big difference between a major upgrade in an ERP system and a small business system like MYB Essentials. Um, so major upgrades uh, do require testing in most cases and a sandbox is created uh, for you. Uh, we will work to make sure any existing customizations, custom reports, dashboards and things uh, continue to function as they were originally designed to do. Um, and we need your help uh, to do that, to do some user testing. Uh, so that's that's what happens each year with, with the major upgrade process. Um, so there is the, some planning and scheduling to do. The, the benefit is uh, a huge amount of new features become available to you, um, and, you know, it is something that we work together on to make sure that happens as seamlessly as possible. Okay, uh, next I just want to provide a little bit more information on the workforce management, um, as that is completely new to, to us and, and would be to you. Uh, so Frank uh, did cover these this slide in his uh, session, so I won't dwell on that too much. Um, let's skip to the next one. Now, a, a workforce management is not uh, for everybody, but it is for a lot of businesses, and particularly if you have you know, a, a reasonable number of employees, uh, particularly if they are shift-based. Uh, you might be managing multiple awards. They might be across multiple locations or areas, uh, and you might have uh, dynamic demand where uh, you're onboarding a number of people quickly for seasonal type work or production or projects, uh, as well as if you have a significant proportion of your workforce that's casual or part-time or paid on hourly rates. So all of those things or any of those things can cause a lot of manual work. Do it, uh, for, so if we talk about shift, if you've got shifts, you need rosters. Uh, we see people doing rosters in Excel spreadsheets, shared Outlook calendars, etc. If you have a built for purpose app, application that's doing it, uh, then not only does it provide the rosters and notification of who's working when, that also handles the award interpretation off the back of it. So that calculation of overtime, application of allowances and things uh, happens automatically. Uh, same with the seasonal peaks and troughs, that often re results in you needing to you know, employ and onboard a number of people quite quickly. And doing that manually, everybody's got a checklist, a piece of paper to check off that things have been done, policies and procedures have been signed, licenses and tickets are all um, grabbed or captured from that employee, whereas the onboarding in a solution designed to do that streamlines that whole process. Next slide. 
so that's just a brief snapshot of what uh, a little bit of the onboarding looks like. So when you onboard a new employee, they're largely doing it themselves via their mobile device. So they can um, fill out information that you need from them that will end up in your payroll solution. They can sign documents, contracts, forms, policies uh, via a digital signature. Um, they can confirm any of the skills and tickets that they need uh, to start with you that they have and upload them. Uh, and the end result is the employees in your system uh, ready to be rostered and paid. So the pain points that often happen with onboarding is, you know, people need to do it quickly. They're using manual checklists or spreadsheets or whatever it is, and you've got often got different people working in different systems doing it. So onboarding is often in the HR part, but a fair amount of that information needs up to end up in payroll. Next slide. Uh, rostering. So as I mentioned earlier. Uh, managing rosters via spreadsheets or documents or shared calendars, um, you know, is possible to do. But the complication is uh, that those things don't necessarily then communicate with the employees what roster or shift they've been assigned to. Uh, they don't necessarily help you if you have to ensure that specific employees have the right skills or tickets to even be on that roster or shift. Um, and also having smart rostering using predefined templates and rules can really accelerate that whole process. So rostering is a strong part of MYB workforce management. And it also includes a budgeting and cost calculation so you can see what your projected labour costs would be for each uh, roster or shift. Next slide. Uh, Timesheets. So uh, on the back of your roster, employees then clock in, clock out, take a break. It's very simple on the mobile device, four buttons. Uh, there is um, then approval processes that apply to that. Uh, and there are a number of timesheet uh, options, so mobile phone, clocking tablet app, facial recognition uh, technology, uh, GPS tracking on the mobile device. Uh, so the intention is to make it as easy as possible for the employee to record their time, uh, make it as easy as possible for supervisors, managers to review, check, correct and approve so that the payroll at the end of the week, fortnight, month is as accurate as possible. Next slide. Uh, leave management. So this leads into employee self-service, which is already a feature of MYB advanced payroll anyway, uh, but is equally an important part of your workforce management. So. Uh, a significant admin overhead often in payroll HR teams is manual leave requests via emails or documents or forms. If it's all done as part of the software, the employee can request their leave uh, from their mobile phone or browser, have it uh, checked and approved uh, by their manager and then automatically process through payroll when that leave is taken. Um, you will have leave calendars where uh, managers can review uh, their team calendar to ensure there's not conflicts of leave taken uh, before they approve it. Um, and this all integrates with your advanced payroll module. Next. So the employee self-service is all of those features we just talked about available on a mobile phone, so an easy, convenient place to look at available shifts, check the roster, look at leave, access documents, uh, look at leave balances, and clock in and out. So just prompting a few questions. When is MYB workforce management available? It's scheduled for release late June, early July. Uh, there are already some 
uh, businesses piloting or having early access to it. So it's a, an available solution as we speak. Um, momentum uh, about to embark on our training uh, for the workforce management so that we can help you with the implementation aspects. Uh, the next question is, can you use MYB workforce management? Short answer is yes, provided you have MYB advanced payroll. So just about all of our customers on this uh, session uh, do have MYB advanced payroll. Uh, you need to be live or close to it uh, because all of the functionality is reliant on the, the underlying plumbing of the payroll database. Another question is, does MYB workforce management integrate with projects uh, or manufacturing? Uh, answer to that is not yet, but it's on the development roadmap. Uh, Frank did mention that in his uh, slides earlier. Um, so it integrates already with MYB events payrolls seamlessly through APIs. And the key benefits at this stage are really that streamlined onboarding, rostering, award interpretation and time capture through to payroll. Once they expand on that functionality, then uh, we expect to see the ability to do rostering related to jobs or projects and time capture associated with those all the way through that same workflow. Uh, so if you're looking for information uh, about MYB workforce management or wanting a demo, that's just through our, our sales team. Uh, so we're opening the floor to any questions that you may have. We have had a couple through the chat and hopefully we've uh, at least uh, partially answered those. Um, I do want to actually just show you a couple of other websites that are very useful. So I'm just going to share again, Morgan. When we talk about uh, MYB upgrades, uh, a lot of the information that you need uh, or want about upgrades and, and various things is on the MYB Advanced Education Centre. And I'm posting the URL into the chat. So the MYB Advanced Education Centre is a public facing website. You don't need to log in to access it. All of the release notes for all of the different versions of MYB Advanced are available here. And you'll be able to see through those release notes what are the new features, um, what are any issues that have been fixed as well. Uh, in addition to that, there is uh, white papers, which are much more detailed information about certain functional areas of MYB Advanced. Uh, there is an MYB Advanced Academy, uh, which is training videos on uh, basic aspects of uh, us using the system, such as creating a purchase order, requests and requisitions, purchasing, as an example. Uh, there's a number of other videos, and there are also knowledge bases for MYB Advanced People or Payroll, as well as MYB Advanced Business. So the MYB Advanced Business Knowledge Base, I'll also post into the chat. and the MYB Advanced People Knowledge Base is available as well. Now you can search those for any article. So they, these are articles developed by MYB to answer questions, um, provide workarounds to known issues if there are any, uh, but basically provide help and, and assistance uh, to um, things you may try be trying to do in your MYB advanced software. Uh, so I'll just stop sharing and pause there and uh, feel free if you have any other questions, uh, unmute yourself or raise your hand or pop something in the chat. Um, if you don't have any questions, we really appreciate you joining our session today and we are interested in your feedback as to whether we're talking about the sorts of things that are of interest to you. Um, any new features or enhancements you would like to see in MYB Advanced, if you want to post them in the chat or let us know or even email us, those all get registered into a portal called the MYB Advanced Ideas Portal. 
that all of us uh, partners around Australia and New Zealand have access to. Um, and part of their development roadmap, a big part of it, I would say, is based on prioritisation of those enhancement requests. Um, so they get voted on by other partners. Um, and apart from MYB's own market research, as uh, the ideas portal is a significant um, part of the development roadmap. Appreciate your time today. Uh, and if you don't have any questions, feel free to drop off the meeting. We are recording. Uh, okay, here's a question. A font size drop down. Uh, so question, is there a font size drop down? Uh, I'd have to check that, Jason. I don't believe so. Normally we just are using the Zoom features in the browser to, to make uh, things bigger or smaller. Uh, font size in the mass email, I would think you can do. Uh, we'd need to probably touch base with you directly to answer that one. Uh, website or document on workforce management? Good question. I can answer that, so I'll quickly share my screen. I would start with a Momentum's website. Uh, we have a landing page, I think, uh, Morgan. Does that take me to the page? Yes. Okay. Let's post that in the chat. Uh, so on that page, if anyone's still there that's uh, watching, you can register your interest. Interest, and uh, we've got a bunch of additional information uh, about it on that page. Uh, Jason, on your request around font sizes, yeah, we, we can certainly submit that as an enhancement uh, for you. So it sounds like you want to be able to make the text bigger or smaller anywhere on any screen is my take on that, leaving aside the email thing. Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody. I uh, hope you enjoyed the session and uh, we'll see you again next time. Uh, end of financial year webinar is coming up um, on the 18th. Is that right, Morgan? That's correct. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.